Okay, so let's check this out. This is an Athrum Blue Box. It was an SDP40. Um, they're they're pretty common. Generally, they're pretty cheap because they're notoriously unreliable. And this is a really old school one. You can see it's got the old motor. And I beefed up the fuel tank. A lot. Um, I went ahead and I replaced the cab with a with an M cab, and it just kind of messed around, sort of just taking some extra parts and seeing what we can make out of it. Well, what we got here is this thing has been wired up and it does work pretty decent, but it's it's old now. I did this several years ago and it is not see it's not the best hasn't been clean in a long time too um, but they have a they have a tendency to go off the track and there's a reason for that and we're gonna correct that reason we're gonna clean up that wiring too and you can see that's not not the way we want this thing to run. Okay, it doesn't really want to run good. You can see it's got the old style clips on it. I got power on max and it's not even doing anything. Really needs some work. And we're going to clean this up and we're going to fix the problem that it has of going off the track. Um, I'll show you here why it does this. See these? These are the old metal side frames, the brass wheels. This middle, the middle axle, I think I might have already corrected this once. You need some up and down movement on the middle axle to keep it on the track. If you can give it some play in there, it'll stay on the track. Because what you want to do is when it gets to a rough spot like going over switches, you want the weight of the locomotive on the outside too. You want the middle one to float a bit. That'll keep it on the track. If you don't have that, you've got three points of contact and one of the wheels will jump the track and that will, that will take it all the way off and you'll have a derailment. All right, so let's break this thing down and get started. So we got it apart. Uh, broke some pieces because we forgot how to take the trucks out. Um, this is the how you do it. You need to take off little, this little guy right here. You take him off first and the trucks come out. If you don't, you're going to end up like I did with a broken arm right there. Yeah, I broke off. Alright, so now we need to clean this frame up and then we're going to go ahead and paint it, which I don't know why I didn't do before. But we're going to do it now. All right, this is how we're gonna solve that problem with the middle axle needing some free play in it. So I got it in the XY vise here, and I'm gonna use a 764 drill bit. And if you can see in there, I'm gonna make that hole in the middle bigger. And we'll start with 764. The problem is if you start with a big one, you'll rip that little bushing right out of there. So we're gonna, drill it out just a little bit and then we'll check it and if we have to go bigger we'll go the next size bigger all right so 764 is good but not quite good enough and now we're going to go ahead and do 1 8 and we'll just drill that a little bit i don't know if you'll be able to see this what you don't want to do. Alright, we'll have to put that back in and that should be 
That should do it. All right, this is the lube that I use. This high temp disc brake wheel bearing grease. Um, it's pretty good stuff. This can last me forever. And what we're gonna do is we don't want to get too much lube on it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our little screwdriver here and just get some about like this. You can see that. All right, then we're gonna go ahead, we'll grease these. And we don't want too much. The nice thing about this grease is that it tends not to spread too much. and doesn't get all over everything. And I've had excellent luck with it for many, many years. And as far as I can tell, it doesn't harm plastic in any way. So we'll get this thing lubed up and we, we've got our 1 8 inch holes drilled and it gives some pretty good play. We'll test it in a second over here on the test track. We'll run it across these switches and see how, how it turns out. Alright, so here they are. Now, let me get my pointer here. This one is the one that I've fixed up. This one has not been opened yet. And there's a very big difference. The one that's not been opened, very tight. The wheels don't want to turn quite right. It takes a lot of force to move them. And it does have the worm in it. Um, we'll just run it across the switches. Now it has the worm in it, so the wheels aren't gonna turn really. But when we're running across the switch, what happens is, at some point, usually about here at the frog, uh, this track is pretty decent, but it will rise up on one axle and then it will go off and you'll be off the track right here like that. Now, the one that I fixed here is nice and freely moving. Going across the switch, you can feel when you get to the frog little tightness but nice and smooth goes right on through very very smooth and generally these trucks are not known to be very free rolling but it's extremely smooth and the other thing is it's quieter so let's get the other one done and then we'll start putting it back together all right, here we got the old Athern big motor. This is the reason why Athern hoods are not scale width. It's because this is the motor that they were working with and they had to make them wider than they really are. Um, so that's a lot of people don't like that, that the hoods are wider and so they kind of ban those locomotives from their layouts. I personally, I love them. But this motor here is definitely showing its age. And this is a really old one because it's screw mounted rather than mounted with motor mounts. And let's, let's give it a shot here. Okay, it takes a little bit to get it going. This thing draws more power than, than a newer motor. Now the problem with this one is, there we go, the squeaking. That squeaking noise not what we want. There it goes. Okay, we don't want that. And I have an idea where that comes from. It comes from the thrust washer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the core out. I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto the thrust washer. And for this one, I so I don't have to take it all the way apart. I'm going to use some Marvel oil. Um, I can take it all the way apart. There's no if you know how to put it back together, you're not going to wreck anything. Some people say, "Oh, you take it apart and and then then it's done for." No, that's just not true. It'll work just fine if you put it back together the right way. But we need a little oil on the thrust washer to get this thing to go. All right, I put a pinhead of oil of this 
Marvel oil. I put a pinhead of oil right here. Right here. There's a thrust washer right there. Just a pinhead's worth. And that has improved it to this. See that? Oh, yeah. Now we're getting somewhere. That did the trick. Okay, I'm gonna, I haven't put any on the other side, like right here. But I'm going to just put a pinhead's worth. I don't want this oil spreading it throughout the motor. So a tiny drop. Just a teeny weeny drop. Right in there. Right there. Right there. Tiny drop. This marble oil will spread by itself, but it, I can't overemphasize the importance of not using a bunch of oil on your trains. That oil spreads, and eventually it wrecks a bunch of stuff. So don't do that. Let me put the next drop on, and then we'll try again. All right, so we got the oil, and we put a pinhead's worth right there. Another one on this thrust washer. If you're not sure what a thrust washer is, it's a tiny washer that goes on the, the pole that runs right through the middle. And when it has oil on it, it, it kind of acts as a, it helps things spin smoothly. Some people, they take it apart and then lose those and put it back together and eventually they, the thing gets out of control and wrecks itself. So it's important you want to keep those thrust washers and they need a, just a pinhead's worth of oil so they need and now what, what has happened is when I turn the power up just a tiny bit start and turn there we go she's starting to turn oh yes that's it right there nice and smooth see it's got a little bit of it's got a little wobble to it but otherwise listen to how quiet it is now now I'm only up to 20% on my tech 2 1500 and we get this nice spin out of it that's pretty good when we get to we get to 30 percent here all right now we got a little bit of power we'll crank her up all the way remember that squeaking that's gone very nice that takes care of that. All right, we got our our frame painted up here. And so that fuel tank is a little bit rough, but it isn't gonna matter because a little later, we'll get it all smoothed out just right. So this thing will look like it has an oversized fuel tank. And this is old school because it has the screw-in mounts. What we're gonna do is we wanna make this thing ready for DCC. In order to do that, the bottom of the motor, which normally sits in here and picks up current from the frame. Sits in there, just like that. Okay, it sits in there and it gets current from the frame. We want to block that. The way we're going to block that is we're going to take a piece of electrical tape here and we're just going to set that in here and insulate the bottom. There we go, we got our insulator in there. All right, then, I drilled a little, little hole right, right here. Right there, I drilled a little hole. And in that hole, I'm gonna put a little brass screw. Yeah, I got a little brass screw in there. And what I'm going to do with this guy is I get, I've got a little solder bead on it. I'm just going to screw him in there. That's where I'm going to get my power from the frame. Now, when I want to put a decoder in this, I can connect my wire directly from this screw to the decoder and then the decoder back to the motor mounts right there. Or the motor pickups right there and there that's how we're gonna do that okay now got the motor tuned up got the frame cleaned up and we're ready to reinstall the motor so I'm gonna go ahead and solder them wires on there 
and then we'll see what we got. All right, all right I want to show you this wire that I'm going to use. I got this on Amazon. I don't remember what gauge it is. It's really small and it's extremely flexible. Yeah, I love this stuff. Super easy to solder. So I'm going to put this on there. The thing that I really like about this wire is I've got a little piece here. If I want to get the end off, I just pinch it with my fingernails and pull it off. If I had two hands available right here, I'd do that right now and show you. But it's really easy. It's not like this is old, old school, solid core hardwire. This is what I'd used before. Um, I'm I'm really starting to like using this extremely flexible small stuff. It um, makes it makes fitting things together much easier and much cleaner. And it's called Strive Day. And you get a pack of five different wires here. We're gonna use red and black. I'm kind of old school on that. I like to use red and black. Black goes on the bottom, red on the top. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, so I got this little wire soldered on here, and it's pretty tiny, right? So how'd you get that on there? Uh, one of the tools you must have and learn to use is a nice tweezers. And I got a whole set of them on eBay for about five bucks. I think I got seven or eight of them. Um, so using a little tweezers here, I'm able to grab onto the wire and hold it right in place. Okay. This thing is mostly DCC ready. The only problem is, when I use these two screws right here, which go to the motor, I go in the bottom here and they mount the motor, that will cause a problem with DCC. When the time comes to put the decoder in, I need to remove these screws, and then I like to use shoe goo. Shugu will hold this motor in place real nice, and when I need to take it out, I can just peel it up, and it'll come right out. But otherwise, it works as real nice anti-vibration stuff. Um, Shugu is great for mo for putting in motors. Um, all right, so let's get this thing put back together and see what we got. Okay, now listen. Here's the thing. When you put this guy back together so that you don't break it, which I already did break it, this is what you need to do. You need to take these three, these two pieces off each one of these, and put them aside so you can get this thing back together. Let's clear this up. There we go. All right. You don't want any grease on this guy because then your linkage will not will not function. So let's see how easy this is. Now look. See these tabs. On this one, you got to make sure that they're lined up the right way. And we're going to find out. The what, what we do is when we put it on the test track, and we do the air, if the arrow points to the right, and you start the locomotive, and it's facing to the right, it should move forward. And we, I like to use red for the top black to the bottom we just got to get them on there the right way and then we test it make sure we don't have thing going backwards but that's that's the rule is that if the locomotive is facing right and the arrow on your power pack is set to the right it should move to the right when you start it up okay now let me show you how to put this guy on here so we just go ahead and we put him in there okay now Unlike before, when we took them apart without that thing and we fought with it, we broke part of it. Now we don't have to do that. Now we can get it in there. And we got to get the little bracket into this hole right there, that little hole right there. And we can get him in there. And yeah, I know I need a holder for this, for this new phone. This video is going to be tough to watch. But... I think we got it. Yep, we did. Okay, he's in there now. Now, we're going to put them together and see if we got it going the right way. I'm somewhat skeptical. And see, here's the front light bracket right there. And that means that is the front of the locomotive. 
but I ain't sure because this motor looks like usually the usually the brushes are to the rear on these we're gonna find out this time and we'll see it's not a problem we can fix it so let's try it all right so here we have it we got it all wired back together and we're gonna try it here okay now I know it's wired right um, but normally I would use down here where I put that tiny little red wire right there Normally I put black wire there. I like black on the bottom pole, red on the top. Now remember, this thing is almost DCC ready. Those motor mount screws gotta come out to put in a decoder. And then like I said, we use the shoe goo to hold the motor in place, it does an excellent job. And then we'll take our power leads, those red wires there, and those will go to the decoder and the decoder will attach to the motor all right let's so let's find out how it runs uh, now I know that it works right I have the arrow pointing right give it a little juice and move to the right look how nice and smooth that is and then we come back and look at that a number four to a number six Nice and smooth, very low power right now. Very nice. Okay, let's let's give it a little bit more of a test. We'll switch the track here. And we're going to do um, this switch is a number four. This is a number four. So we're going to see how it does four to four. Give it a little power. Oh, we ran right through a switch that so was switched the wrong way. Let's switch them correctly. Okay, we're ready now. We're gonna go four to four and see what happens. A little power, nice and we'll go nice and slow. Oh, we made it. Very good. Let's get. Let's go back and give it a try. A little higher speed. See if we can skid them off the track. Oh, we did skid them right off the track. That's not too good. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. Let's get them on the track. All right, now let's see if we can find out what's going on here. It's a four to a four. Slow speed seems to be doing okay. I don't see anything. Our floating axle is doing the trick. But we skid it at high speed. Generally, we won't be running that fast. That high speed is just for power. Pull a heavy train. There he goes. Very nice. This one turned out to be pretty good. Let's get some couplers on it and find out uh, how much horsepower it has.